Hello, my first graders. Today, we are working on page 605 in our math book, and that's lesson 10.6. Okay, so if you're not on page 605, find the page and hit play when you're ready. Okay, today we are again working with tally charts or tally graphs, and we're going to use that information to answer questions, okay, um, using the graph. So again, don't forget, like we talked about the other day, tally marks, right, when you have four, when you go to make number five, it goes across, okay, and then you leave a space and you continue on. Right? And then when you get another four and you go to make five, it goes across again. When we count them, we can count them the groups by five or we can count them individually. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. This is a graph about our favorite game. So we have card games, puzzles, board games. So the children chose what games they like the best. Okay, we need to put our totals in. Okay, how many kids like the card game, puzzle, board game? So card game, let's look. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we put the five in the total, right? Total how many? Puzzle, let's look. One, two, three. And then our board game. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay? Or we could have counted it five, ten, because that's a group, these are groups of five. All right, now we're going to use this information, now that we filled that out, to answer the questions down here. Which game did the most children choose? Circle. So which one did most of the children choose? Remember, when they ask us which one was chosen the most, right, that's the one with the bigger number. So which one has the bigger number? Right here, look across. Board game. So we would circle this one. Which game did the fewest children choose? Hmm. Look at the chart. Which one's the fewest? Remember, fewest means smallest. <gasps> Puzzle. All right. All right. So today, again, we're going to use our tally chart or tally graph to answer questions. When you're ready, we're going to turn the page. All right. How can you make a tally chart to show the boats at the lake? Decide if each boat has a sail. Boats at the lake. Boats with sails. Boats without sails. Now look, the tallies are missing. So we need to use this picture to figure out how to put the tallies in. So how many boats with sails? Well, they started counting them for us. Look, they crossed them out. Do you see that? One, two, do you see more? Yeah. Three, four. Four boats have sails. So what I like to do is put the total in here because I see that there's four. And then I can make my tally marks match this number. So I'm going to trace over this. One, two, three, four. And I stop there because my total is four. Now I need to count the boats without sails. See the ones without sails? All right, let's see how many do not have sails. We'll cross them off as we count them. One, two, three, four, five, Six. There's six boats without sails. So we're going to put the number six here because we know we counted six. Now I need to show that using tally marks. Okay, six. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. 
So remember, when we're making a number that's bigger than five, we do groups of six, right? There was our four, number five goes across six, okay? So when you're making your tallies, you might wanna make sure that you go slowly so that you notice when you have a group of four, so when you do your five, it goes across. All right, well, we had no questions to answer about the boat picture up there. Instead, they're gonna have us go down here and we're going to use this fish tank to help us fill out our chart. It says fish in the tank. There's there for our total. Zebra fish, those are the green ones. Angel fish, okay, those are the yellow and orange ones. So we need to see, okay, how many zebra fish are in the tank and how many angel fish. So we're gonna count them. You ready? Let's start with the zebra since that's on top. So let's cross them off. One, two, three, four, five. There were five zebra fish. Okay, before we do our tally marks, let's just count how many angel fish we have. One, two, three. Okay, now my first graders, we need to make tally marks to show five and tally marks to show three. I want you to pause the video, make those tally marks to show the numbers. Hit play when you're ready. All right, if you're hitting play, you made your tally marks and you're ready to check. All right, I needed to do, you needed five. One, two, three, four, five. Does your tally marks look like this? A group of four with one through them? Double check. All right, then you needed three. One, two, three. Now that's a small number, so we didn't need anything to go across them because there's only three. Now we're going to answer questions about our tally chart. It says, how many zebra fish are in the tank? Mm, so look at our, look at our tank. How many zebra fish are in the tank? We don't need to look at this picture anymore. We're just looking at our chart. So go to zebra fish, how many? Five. Okay. How many more zebra than angel are there? So how many more zebra fish than angel fish are there? So think about what it's asking. How many more than, mm, more than, what kind of problem is that? Are we adding or subtracting? Yeah, we're subtracting. When we see that than, we know it's a comparison problem, right? So we're comparing. So let's start, right? Our big number minus our small number. Right? More than, less than, fewer than, that than gives it away, right? Five, take three away. How many are left? Two, so there are two more zebra fish. Right? Look at this one, how many Zebra fish and angel fish are in the tank. Mm, what are they asking us to do? Are we comparing them or do they want us to know how many there are all together? They want to know how many there are all together, right? Zebra fish and angel fish. So if they're all together, are we minusing them or are we adding them? Yeah, we're adding them. So look at our two numbers. Five zebra fish plus three angel fish. How many are there all together? It's only zebra fish and angel fish are in the tank. It's like how many of these are there all together? Go ahead and add them all together. Yeah, 
Did you get eight? Yeah, so five plus three more, right? Five, six, seven, eight. Or you could have counted them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So when they ask us how many, how many all together, right? They didn't say, use the words all together, but they say zebra fish and angelfish. Okay, that means we're putting them together. Right, if you need to pause, you can. If not, we're gonna look across the page. Which of these snacks do most children like best? It says, ask 10 friends, make a tally mark for each. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you the numbers to go in here, and then I wanna see you make the tallies for them. You ready? So we're gonna say seven children like apples, Two, one. All right. I want you to pause. You're going to show me tally marks for the number seven. You're going to show me tally marks for the number two. And show me tally marks for the number one. Okay, hit play when you're ready to check. All right, let's check this out. If you're hitting play, that means you finished filling in this graph. You should have your seven, your two, and your one. All right, seven tally marks should look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that was our seven tally marks. Then we had two for the apple. And we have one for the yogurt. So that is what our tally marks look like. Seven, two, one. So remember, one, right? That's all we've got, just blue. And two, right? We don't need anything across because it's only two. We didn't get to five yet. So now we're going to answer questions. I'm going to have you answer these first two questions. How many children chose pretzels? Write that here. How many children chose yogurt? Write that there. And then try this one. Which snack do most children like best? Which one was the most? All right. Hit pause. Hit play. And then play when you're ready to check. All right. If you're hitting play, you're ready to check your work. How many children chose pretzels? Well, you should have written the number seven. Seven children chose pretzels. How many chose yogurt? Only one. Which snack do most children like best? Well, that was easy, right? Pretzels, seven is the biggest number. All right, now let's look down here at Think Smarter. If you made a mistake, you can pause to fix. If not, I'm gonna keep going with the Think Smarter. What if six children out of the 10 chose pretzels? Which snack would be the favorite? Okay, so look at our chart. What if instead of seven children choosing pretzels, only six children chose pretzels? Which snack would be the favorite? If this number was six, hmm, would this still be the favorite? Think about it. Is six still bigger than two or one? Yes. So in this case, pretzels would still be the favorite. If you have time, watch our math on the spot video. And that way you can see maybe their chart, maybe their, their tally chart was different than ours. Maybe they would have a different answer. Okay, so you can check that, check that out. It says write your own question about the tally chart. So they did ask us already about how many children like pretzels, how many children like yogurt. They didn't ask how many children like apple, did they? Or what snack is like the least? Or maybe you wanna ask a question about how many people like pretzels and apples, or maybe apples and yogurt. So I would like you to pause, think about what you could ask about this graph and go ask a grown-up at home. 
See if they can answer the question that you that you're asking them. See if they can answer it. All right. When you're done, come on back. All right. I hope that your I hope your grown up was able to answer your question, and hopefully you asked a question about this graph. Because remember, if you ask about uh, if they like milk or not, right? That doesn't have to do with our graph. So you want to stick with questions about the graph that you can answer using this. Okay, I'm going to turn to the next page. If you need to pause, you can. All right. Janet asked 10 friends to choose their favorite subject. She will ask 10 more children. So here's our favorite school subject. She asked 10 kids about math, reading, or science. You need to fill in the totals. The total is missing on our graph. So pause your video. Tell me how many kids like math, reading, and then science. Hit play when you're ready to check. All right, you filled in our graph. So let's see how many kids liked math. Well, we have five, six. How many liked reading? Two and science, two. Hey, what do you notice right away? Hmm. Yeah. Two for reading, two for science. They're the same. All right, it says predict which subject will children most likely choose. So what if what if Jenna asked 10 more kids what subject they like the best? Look at our graph, what we see already. Which one do you think that most kids will pick? Probably math, right? Math has six kids. That's a lot of kids. If she asked more kids, it looks like more of the kids like math. So the subject that the kids will probably choose would be math. And I just even copy that word right from there. All right. All right. Now here's another predict. Remember, predict means to make a good guess. And I should have explained that before. To make a guess based on what we know so far. So if we know that this is the answer for 10 kids right now, if you ask 10 more, it probably would be about the same. Might be a little different, right? But not so much different, especially if you're asking kids who are in the same school. So we're going to predict again. We're going to make a good guess based on what we know. Which subject will children least likely choose? So least means the smallest amount. Look at our graph. Hmm, two and two. That's the least right now. So what do you think? Which one do you think will have the least amount? Yeah, if she has 10 more kids, it might be reading that's the least, or it could be science. So either one, if you said reading or if you said science, you are correct because right now it's showing that they are the smallest amount. So you can choose to write reading or you can choose to write science. I think I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to say reading. If you need to pause, you can if you're still writing. Then it says, how can you prove if your prediction is good? Well, let's just talk about this. How do we prove that that is a good prediction? Well, what could we do? Could we ask those 10 more kids? We could, if we were at school, we could ask our classmates, 10 of our classmates, about if their favorite subject was reading, math, or science. Right? And that would help us know. We can't try it because we are not together to be able to ask everyone. Okay, But that is how we could try and see if our answer was right. All right. 
Let's look down here. It says complete the tally chart to show the number of votes. Well, they already did apple for you. See, fruits we like, totals, bananas. What did they forget to do? They forget to fill in their tally marks. I want you to pause. I want you to fill in banana. Five bananas, show five tally marks. Grapes, you should show two tally marks. Hit play when you're ready to check. All right, if you're hitting play, you're ready to check. Bananas, it should have looked like this. One, two, three, four, five. Grapes, you had two. One, two, nothing across because there's only two. All right, my first graders, you're gonna practice on your personal math trainer.